Suppose there's an API that you really need to use in your application, but there's no SDK for it. What you're going to be stuck doing, at least in C Sharp, is using an HTTP client, making an HTTP request after serializing some data into the body, and then getting a response back, reading the response, maybe deserializing the response into some kind of object that you can use in your application, and that's a pretty repetitive process, pretty tedious. Instead, what we can use is refit, which is a REST library that is going to simplify this entire process. We didn't need no pre-made SDK. So the API that we are going to be consuming in this demo is the Firebase Authentication REST API. So Firebase is a platform that I've been using in a lot of my applications recently. So for example, with Firebase Authentication, it's basically an authentication microservice that just works. All we have to do is call the API and we get back access tokens, we can register users. It's pretty easy to use. The only issue is that if we look over here, as you can see, there's not really any documentation for a C Sharp SDK because there isn't a C-sharp SDK. So that being said, we are going to use refit to consume this API. But the first thing we're gonna have to do is head into the Firebase console. I got this opened up. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You'll have to sign up, create an account, but we can create a project here. I'll call this the refit demo. I accept the terms. Let's continue. Uh, we'll add Google Analytics, even though we're not gonna use it. We'll save that for a future SDK if that's even possible to use in a non-web application. And then blah, 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 accept again and create the project. I should also mention that Firebase authentication is actually free as long as you're not using phone authentication. So that's another reason why I love Firebase. So that takes a while, but we can continue now. We have our project and over here in the build tab, let's head over to authentication and we want to get started. So enable authentication for the project. And we're also going to enable email and password authentication. So enable that because there is all kinds of different sign-in providers here. So you can have Google authentication, GitHub authentication that would be useful, but implementing those OAuth flows in a non-web application is pretty difficult. So we're just going to stick to email and password authentication. And then the last thing we have to do is head over to our project settings over here, and we're going to have to use this web API key in just a second. But now we got everything set up. So back in Visual Studio, I have two projects here. So the console app, that's going to do all of our application stuff. And then we have our SDK, which is going to use refit and actually make the API calls. So the first thing we're going to do is install refit as a NuGet package for the SDK project. So let's search for refit and we're going to add refit. And we're also going to add the refit HTTP client factory package because I want this demo to incorporate the .NET host and we need this package in order to do that. So here in our SDK, we're going to define our refit services. So let's create a new folder and we'll call this services. And the way refit works is that we create interfaces that contain methods that define the API calls that we want to make. So for example, we might have an I Firebase login service, and this will have a method. We'll make it a task so that we can call it asynchronously to log in, but login is going to have to take in some data for the user's credentials. And then it's going to, have to return tokens for the authenticated user. And then we're also going to have to tell refit the endpoint to call with this request data. And also if it should be a get request or a post request, etc. So if we look at the Firebase authentication documentation for signing in, called it login in our case, but that should be okay. Same kind of thing. It takes an email, a password and a return secure token property. So all this data needs to be passed into our login function. So we're going to create a folder over here for requests and we're going to have a class for a login request. And as we mentioned, we need a property for the email, the password and a Boolean for return secure token. So that's all of the request data. We can use that as the parameter for our login method. So just the login request. And then this returns all of this data. So in this case, I think all I want is the ID token the refresh token and the expires in, which is in seconds. So let's create a responses folder over here for a login response. And we're gonna have an ID token, a refresh token, and the expires in, which is a string. At least that's what the documentation says. But anyways, now we can use this as the response from our login method. So the login response. And then lastly, we're gonna have to tell refit that this is a post request to the V1 accounts signing with password route. And then we also have to pass in our API key as a query parameter here, which we'll demonstrate in a little bit. But let's focus on getting this set up. So this is to v1 accounts signing with password. Copy that. And it's a post request. So import post from refit and then paste in that path. So that should be good for logging in. But before we can even test this, we're going to need to register a user. So let's create a new service over here. An interface for the Firebase register service. We'll have a single method to register. And if we look at the docs, this is a post request 
to the v1 accounts sign up so import post again from refit paste in that path and we're going to need a register request and a register response so same kind of stuff that we did for the login service let's create that request a class for the register request and actually our register request and register response are going to have the same exact properties as the login request and login response. I still feel like they should be separate objects though, although that could go either way, but I think I'm gonna keep them as separate objects and just copy those properties into the register request and then have a register response, just copy that and rename it to register response. And then we can import both of those in the register service. So the last endpoint that we're gonna hit is the refresh token endpoint. So refreshing an expired ID token. So let's create a service for that. The I Firebase refresh service. This is also going to be a post request. So import that. And the path for this is V1 token. So copy that. Keep in mind, this is a different base URL compared to sign up and sign in. So we will have to remember that when we actually instantiate these refit services, but plop in that path and this will return a refresh response. We'll name our method refresh. And then a parameter here is gonna be some kind of refresh request. And now that I'm here, I actually forgot one very important thing for these other services. And that is that we want this data to be passed in through the body. So just throw a body attribute there. Same thing with the register service. And then same thing with the refresh service, except if we look at the documentation here, the content type is form URL encoded. So on this body attribute, we need to set the body serialization method to URL encoded. So by default, this will serialize it to JSON. And that's why we don't have to actually specify anything here because we do want this just plopped into the body as JSON. So let's create that refresh request and we need a grant type and refresh token. So let's get properties for these, a string for the refresh token and a string for the grant type. Although grant type is always just refresh token as the value. So we can set that here, just make this a getter for a refresh token. And then also we need to alias these. So refresh token needs to be aliased as refresh underscore token and grant type needs to be aliased as grant underscore type. Now, if we name this refresh token property, refresh underscore token like that, then we wouldn't need this alias, but that's kind of disgusting. That kind of goes against naming conventions. So gonna stick to the Pascal case. And then we need our refresh response and same data as the login response and register responses. So we're gonna copy that and paste it in the refresh response, except these have underscores for the property names. So we need to account for that. And since this response is going to be returned as JSON, we have to use JSON property. So not alias as, the only reason we use alias as is because this data is serialized as URL encoded. Oh, and I can't remember if it's JSON property or JSON property name. Looking at the refit docs right now, it says refit six uses system.text.json for JSON serialization. So it would make sense to use JSON property name here since that is from the system.txt.json namespace. And this is the ID token and the refresh token is refresh underscore token. And then lastly expires underscore in. All right, that was fun. Let's import our response and request. And we should have all of the services that we need for the demo. So keep in mind, we did leave out a lot of API calls because otherwise this video would go on forever. And I feel like this is enough to show the core functionality of refit, but you might want to check out changing passwords, getting user data, but finally let's test this out. So in our console application, let's add a project reference to our SDK. So actually the first thing I want to do in this program.cs is set up dependency injection so I can demonstrate how you would incorporate this into the .NET host, which is why we installed the refit.http client factory NuGet package, but we're also going to need packages in our console application and we want hosting. So that is microsoft.extensions.hosting. Let's install that. And now we can take the host, import that from microsoft.extensions.hosting and create a default builder, pass in our args, and we'll eventually build that into a host. So let's get that host. Then we'll do a host.start and then we'll use the SDK down here. But first we're going to have to configure services. So this takes a callback with a service collection that we'll call services. And inside here, we can register all of our refit services. So we'll take our services and we wanna add a refit client for an iFirebase register service Service, but we also want to configure the HTTP client. So import that from Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. Let's move this onto a new line. And we're going to take that client so that gets passed in via this action where we can configure the client. And we want to set the base address to a new URI 
And let's grab this base URL from the documentation. So this is identitytoolkit.googleapis.com. Copy that. We'll throw that into a string so we can reuse it. So the identity toolkit base URL, and then use that down here. So that'll be enough to call the endpoint. But what we also want to do is add an HTTP message handler. And we want an HTTP message handler that is going to add our API key to the end of every request. So we'll call this handler the Firebase API key HTTP message handler. And then we're gonna have to create that. Let's create then our SDK. So a new folder, we'll call this HTTP and copy this name so we can create a class for it. So create that class. And this needs to inherit from delegating handler, which as we can see, inherits from HTTP message handler. And on this handler, we want to override send a sync. And before we send, we wanna take the request and we wanna mess around with the request URI and we wanna set that to a new value. So a new URI. And let's create that URI using some string interpolation. And we want the original request URI, but then we also want to tack on an API key. And I think that's how we actually pass it. Let's check the documentation. Oh, and I was wrong, it's just key. So fix that. And then that API key can just come through the constructor. So generate a constructor for the API key. And then we can pass in our API key as the key for the request so that Firebase can distinguish our projects. So I'll put a breakpoint here so we can see this later, but now let's import this HTTP message handler. And there was some documentation here. Let me see, maybe it's on here, but it says our handler type needs to be registered as a transient service. So let's do that. Let's add a transient for this HTTP message handler. And let's pass in a factory function here that tells how to create our Firebase API key handler. And we wanna do this so that we can pass in our API key through this constructor. So let's get our API key up here and we'll pass that into the handler. And let's grab that from our project real quick. So copy that from our project settings. And there we go. Now let's do the registration. So first we need our Firebase register service so we can get that from the host services and resolve the Firebase register service. And now we'll take our register service and register let's get a new register request in here so my email will be singleton sean at gmail.com my password will be test one two three exclamation point and then return secure token will be true and let's get a response we're gonna have to await this so let's make our static void made an async task import that and then let's just throw a read key right here so we can put a breakpoint here and take a look at the register response all right so we're gonna register we have updated the request URI and that looks good. Perfect. And oh, we actually got a response and oh, look at that. It actually worked. Okay. So let's go into our Firebase console, head back over to authentication. And there we go. We did register. That is fantastic. And we need to dispose of our host when we're done with this. So let's fix that real quick. We could wrap all of this in a using statement. But let's just do a host.dispose at the end. And now what happens if we try and register again? Okay, so we get a 400 bad request. So for the rest of this demo, let's just throw this in a try catch and not throw. I went over handling refit exceptions in my other refit video. But anyways, this just throws an API exception that we can catch. And if we look at this, you can deserialize the response content, get the reason phrase, all kinds of stuff like that. But not going to dig too deep into that right now, because next up, Let's log in. So let's just copy this refit client registration, except this is for the Firebase login service and same stuff actually. So that was easy. The last thing we're gonna do is register the Firebase refresh service. And this is a different base URL. So we're gonna have to grab that from the documentation. So copy that secure token .googleapis.com, paste that in here, the secure token base URL. And we're going to use that for the refresh service. And this also needs our API key. So we will use our HTTP message handler again. So first we're going to log in. Let me just copy all of this, except this is a Firebase login service. Let's name it that and resolve that from our host. And we're going to take our login service and log in with a login request and get back a login response. And we'll plop a breakpoint down and make sure that we actually successfully log in, which we do. Let's look at the response and there's our ID token and refresh token. So the last thing we're gonna do is refresh that ID token, even though it has it expired in this case. So we want our Firebase refresh service, get that from our host services. So resolve 
our refresh service and that'll give us back a refresh response and we'll use our refresh service to refresh with a refresh request we don't have to set the grant type which we actually can't anyways but that should be refresh token and then our refresh token is the refresh token from our login response and hopefully this works this one was a little bit quirky because our body is serialized as form url encoded so let's make sure that worked and no exceptions and if we look at our refresh response we get new tokens. So I should also mention, we did do this refresh even though our ID token wasn't expired. If you were using that ID token to authenticate against a real server, you would probably wanna create some kind of HTTP message handler to automatically refresh the expired ID token if it is expired. So if you're interested in seeing how that HTTP message handler would work, I did go over how to implement that in my other refit video, so feel free to check that out. So some other improvements, what if we made return secure token read only as true? Because I think it needs to be true anyways, because the documentation says it should always be true. So let's ensure it's always true. And let's get rid of that setter. And let's see if this still works. And it doesn't seem like it does. Now we get null for the refresh tokens. Anyways, the last thing I wanna do is move all of this registration into our SDK so that all of our clients that use our SDK don't have to do the same registration stuff every single time. So we'll just throw a new folder in our SDK project for extensions, and we'll call this the add Firebase authentication SDK host builder extensions. So quite the long name, but this is gonna be a static class because we are gonna have an extension method in here. It's gonna give us back our configured host builder. So actually our SDK project is going to need Microsoft.extensions.hosting as well. So let's install that and import host builder now. And we're gonna call our method add Firebase authentication SDK. And this is an extension method for an I host builder. And we will return that host builder, but before we return it, we're going to configure it. So configure the services, and then we'll snag all this configuration from our program.cs, move it into our reusable extension method. So paste it in there, make sure we import everything we need. We'll take the API key as a parameter, since that'll definitely vary between applications, and then we'll move our base URLs into here. So grab those from the program.cs, cut them out, paste them in here. We'll make them private const strings and rename them to be private const strings. So the identity toolkit base URL, and then the secure token base URL. These are all uppercase with underscores to denote that they are consts. At least that's the naming convention I use for my constants. And now back in our program.cs, all we have to do here is add the Firebase authentication SDK, pass in our API key, and import this extension method. And now let's see if our login returns a refresh token now while we test this out. And darn, still no refresh token. And oh, I know the issue. So I forgot to hard code this to true here. Dang it. So I'd only done it in the register request. So I was talking about earlier, should we duplicate these properties between the register request and the login request? I said yes. And look, it came back to haunt us because I messed that up. But now, it should actually work, let's see. And there we go, we do get a refresh token. So it seems return secure token only matters for the refresh token. If it's false, you'll still get an ID token. So that's something to keep in mind, but I think we want a refresh token every time. I don't know, now I'm not too sure. If I make this a NuGet package, I think I'll make that an optional property and then default it to true, but that's enough ranting. Anyways, we have successfully used refit. We defined services that include the methods that represent the calls that we wanna make, to the Firebase Authentication API, which is extremely awesome for authentication. And personally, I'm excited to use, hopefully you are too. I also demonstrated how to create a custom HTTP message handler. In this case, we append an API key to our request, which is required so that we can access our Firebase project. And then we created this nice little extension method so that we can easily add the Firebase Authentication SDK to any client application that uses the .NET host. But other than that, you should now have the essentials to use refit in your own application in order to consume all of those APIs out there in order to build your dream application. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.